but we're going to talk about how to position your elements on the page. Mm -hmm. So you know how to make something stay at the top of the page, how to make uh, elements uh, sit next to each other nicely, how to center things. Um, you know, how, how to position those elements, as well as what goes into sort of the position of an element. What is, not to get too philosophical here, but what is an element? You know, what is it, seriously, yeah. what is it composed of? Um, which is the box model, you know, an element is not simply the content, it's also the stuff around the content. <laughs> <laughs> so an element isn't just an element, there's more to it than yes. just simply just that, 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 that individual tag. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and we're also going to talk about how elements can interact with each other and sort of disrupt each other on a page, um, and how we can solve those issues. Okay. So, um, so, so at the end of the slide, or at the end of this module, I'm hoping to get a page like this. So you know, it's not beautiful, but it's a rough estimate of what a landing page, what a pretty modern day landing page would look like. And we're going to basically position all these elements that I've put in here um, and get from this mm -hmm. to this. Perfect. I love it. Great. So first, um, we should talk about the display property. I mean, this really gets an element to actually display on a page. And there's a, there's a lot of different HTML elements, as you guys well know. Um, and there are a couple types. Two main types, really. The first is a block level element. And that, those are the typical elements that you're thinking of. Um, paragraphs, divs, forms, headings, you know, anything that really takes up an entire row for itself on the page. Mm -hmm. There are also then inline elements like spans, um, links. You know, if you're if you're using the B tag for bolding something, that's an inline element, um, and they don't take up an entire page. You can think of these roughly as you know things that could go inside of a paragraph or inside of something else. Okay. Um, and I think that's an easy shortcut to think about it. Not exactly, but that gets you into the right idea. Um, and you can also display things not only as block or as inline, you can also hide, completely hide an element from the page using display none. Um, and that's a bit different from something else that you might have heard about called visibility none. Visibility none basically takes an element and hides it, but still ha like basically has a placeholder size for it on the page. Display none actually hides the element altogether. So um, you know if you had three things and you hit the middle one, then it would basically collapse into two. Whereas if you use visibility none, you would basically have one and then a blank space and then three. That makes so sense. display none completely disappears. Visibility, there's nothing that's going to be there, but it's just going to be white space, if, if you will, that's right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, something funny I saw was, you know, it's, it's basically like a ninja. It's there, but you don't see it. <laughs> or an invisibility cloak. Okay. Um, I like it. I like it. Um, yeah. One little thing that's worth highlighting, though, um, is especially for people who are doing server side, is that that HTML is still sent down to the client. So if somebody went in and viewed the source, they'd still be able to see the text behind the scenes. They're just not seeing it on the browser screen. Yeah, it's just a good way to sort of dynamically hide elements on the page mm -hmm. if you need to do that. Um, you know, for instance, we'll get into this later on, but if you're resizing um, a page like based on screen size, it's very helpful there. And then there's a... No, no, go ahead. Is that confusing? No. Okay, no. great. Um, and there's I, last thing I just thing always that... have this confused look on my face. It's just me. <laughs> okay, just checking. Um, <laughs> but the last thing that could be a little bit confusing is that there's an inline block type element. So a block type element, you know, typically needs a whole row for itself. An inline block element basically allows you to collapse a bunch of um, block elements onto the same row. So, you know, for example, if you had like three cards that you wanted to show on the same page, each in a little div, you would be able to do that by setting them to inline blocks rather than just block elements. Okay. Um, so actually, if we go to my example here, you can see that these are all you know inline blocks, but without styling, they're they're just block elements. They're just sitting you know one behind each other. So like those this. are all contained inside of div tags, and so the div tags are just going to go top to bottom there. Yeah, and I can show you that in the F12 tools, you'll see. I mean, they're just like very basic boxes, mm -hmm. um, and they don't have you know an inline block element like the or inline block property like these do. Let me open this up. Uh, yeah, you'll see they're, they're shown as display inline block. Okay. And you can also see that if you, let me disable this, they automatically oh. go back to being you know, okay. one behind another. 
All right. So, so that normal block is just going to go down, down, down. That inline block is, it, they're still separate element, but they're not automatically going to go down to the next line, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, it, it's a pretty common use case. You Sometimes you don't want everything to go one single file down the page. Sometimes you just want two things next to each other. Right. And that makes it easy, or makes it possible even. Um, something else that we should talk about, the second most important thing in show, having a having something show up on the page is the position property. So the display, you know, makes sure it shows up, but the position actually talks about where it is. Mm -hmm. Or how to how to determine where it is, shall I say. Um, so the first type is, so there's a, whoa, there's a couple of types for this. The first is static, and that's basically the default, completely unformatted way of um, having a position. So it'll just sit exactly where it should be on the page um, by default. The second is relative. So that is relative to where its default position would be on a page. So for instance, you know, if something is in the, um, if something is a first element, so if it was, let me, you know, if you had an element that was, oh, how do I do this? Ah, uh, never mind. Basically. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, basically, you had an element in the top right corner of something, and you want to shift that down a little bit. You mm -hmm. know, shift it down by 100 pixels or maybe 10% um, based on the page. You would use the relative because you're basically trying to just move the element relative to where its original place would be. Um, the next one is fixed, and that's just relative to the browser window. And this is especially useful for you know, headers, for instance, you've seen it on a lot of web pages probably, that move with you as you scroll. And the last is um, an absolutely placed element. These, I think, are less commonly used, um, and they're a little, and they can kind of be confusing. Um, absolute elements are put basically exactly where you where you position it. So if you give it, um, so if you give it, you know, I want it to be from the top of the page, 100 pixels. From the left of the page, 100 pixels. It'll just be right there, and nothing else will move it. It doesn't listen to any of the other elements. Whereas a lot of these other ones, um, they they relate to other things. Like for example, the fix uh, is relative to the browser window, and the rel and relative position is relative to where its default place is. So um, let me show you an example of that. Yeah. Go in and see it. That's yeah. always sort of the best way. Yeah. So for instance, um, this header right here is a fixed element, right? So when you're moving down the page, it's fixed relative to the browser window. Nice. So you didn't do any JavaScript or anything fancy like that. You just simply said fixed. Yeah. Um, it, in fact, if you look at my HTML code, there is absolutely no JavaScript on this page because I just want to to make clear that everything that happens here is based purely um, on CSS. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any absolutely placed elements on this page because there, it didn't actually seem like it was necessary <laughs> to have you know something just randomly in this cor in the upper left hand corner or you know right something yeah. like that on the page. Plus, uh, those would actually you know scroll with you. So as you're moving past it, it would just go away. And um, the absolutely position elements are also just not very flexible, obviously, because you're putting them in one place and they won't necessarily move uh, or shift according to the layout in a pleasant way. So uh, now that we sort of have the groundwork for how all these elements are placed, um, let's actually go through and place the and place our sort of mismatch elements on our other page. Okay, so we'll start with with that 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 ugly page and actually prettify it. Yeah, exactly. You'll see okay. in the header here. Uh, this is in a list. Uh, we'll of course you know make those in line. We'll mm -hmm. we'll make all of this work. But let's uh, start by doing some of our position and element stuff. So so this is a base CSS file that I have for that page. Um, as you can see, you know a lot of these things are actually styled a little bit. Like there's there are these boxes. Um, you know, I yep. change the background color. These aren't important to positioning, so I just put that in there. So we're not sta starting with a completely blank page. <laughs> that I, I tried it. I tried to put that in the demo. That actually does take forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and, and you had to get rid of that serif font. Uh, of course. I just <laughs> the first thing you have to do. Although, um, like what Chris had before, you know, something that's nice to put here is in case they don't have Arial. I don't really know people who won't have Arial, you can yeah. put sans serif um, just to you know, have a fallback. Arial, okay. Perdana, they're basically always there. Yeah. Yeah. They're the good go-tos. 
Um, OK, so something we haven't talked So first, we're going to position our header on the page. And something that we haven't really talked about yet is uh, width and height. So, um, and these are pretty self-explanatory mm -hmm. elements of uh, there's pretty self-explanatory properties of an element. The width, you know, determines how wide it is, and height determines how how tall it is. And uh, so you see that I have put a couple of different positions in here. For the header, uh, I stretch it to 100%. And that is 100% basically of what its parent element is. But because header, um, you can see in my HTML file here, it does it, it is sitting right here. It doesn't really have a uh, parent element besides body. Um, and body is just 100% of the page, obviously. Um, that'll automatically stretch to 100% of that page. OK, so, so just to, to sort of reiterate that, uh, that width at 100% is based on the parent element. It's not based on the browser window. And it just so happens that this is inside of body, so that's why it's 100% of the entire window, because body is the entire window. Yeah. OK. Yeah, I mean, if you want, we can go through and we can show this to be, uh, if we change body to be with 50%, and this would just, you know. Um, or I guess we should do 500 pixels to make that a bit more clear. Ah, huh, I like that. OK. Um, and we refresh this. Yeah, you'll see that this, I mean, the entire body is now 500 pixels. And then, but the header block is still 100% of the width here. Okay. So you'll see here, I mean, body is just that 500 pixels across. Mm -hmm. And then, so is header, though, because it's 100% of that. I like it. Yeah, so let's go through and undo this. We don't want, you know, that kind of a page. Um, and we are, we're also setting height here. We're setting height um, in pixels. So as Christopher talked about before, there are a bunch of ways that you could set these values. And um, in here, setting uh, setting element sizes as well as text sizes, you can use things like EM um, to, to make it relative to the to size of text. I'm just going pixels here because that makes sense. You want, you want your header to be at the top of the page at a fixed height. Um, so I'm just setting it to that. And what I'm going to do now is Going back to positioning, I'm going to set its position to actually be fixed. So it sits at the top of the page. OK. So let's see what happens now. So you just made one little change there. You just simply said fixed. Yeah. Um, I simply said fixed for the position. And now if you see when I start scrolling, that element stays at the top of the page. Now it's worth noting that you know there's some spacing issues. Um, we're going to get to that in the box model part. Okay. So don't worry about that for now. All right. Um, we're also going to change some of the elements in our header because you'll see I mean, we don't want our header to be uh, or our header links to be vertical. We want them to be horizontal on the page like this. Okay. So we can do that by simply making these uh, list items uh, inline mm -hmm. instead of block like they are by default. And so what we can basically do for that is we can say display inline. And once we save that, when we refresh here, they'll, of course, be in a line. OK. All right. So by default, it was block. So boom, 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 down the list. And now inline, it's all going to be horizontal. Exactly. So yeah, inline just allows these elements to sit next to each other. Um, it's not. It, it's not necessary to use you know, inline block for, for elements like this, where they're still small and you know they could be part of like, like I said before, you know, something that could be part of a paragraph, like, mm -hmm. I, um, like I said before, uh, I just use inline. But we will use inline block for a couple of other things. So I'm just tabbing all over the place here. Um, you'll see in this page, you know, for instance, we have these two elements. We have this sort of side text here and this image being on the same line. And you can achieve that using inline block. OK. We also have all of these sort of uh, cards here of all the all the things that we theoretically teach <laughs> in each of our modules. I left I like them it. blank. I was going to put some lore of in there, but then it just seemed like we were teaching you rubbish. So <laughs> I left them blank for now. Um, but yeah, these are also inline block. And actually, one nice thing about inline block is that um, they automatically sort of re um, they automatically will reseat themselves oh, nice. uh, based okay. on your your viewport size or um, your browser. So uh, at so those kind of adapt depending on your display. Okay. Uh, so we're going to set two things to inline block. We're going to set uh, uh, three things 
to inline block. We're going to set uh, the side text mm -hmm. and this image to inline block, and we're also going to set all of these boxes to inline block. Okay. So in Visual Studio, um, you'll see. Okay, let me show you the code for this first. You'll see that the banner text and uh, your, the banner text is you know that large header that we had, and the mm -hmm. side text and the CSS image are what we want side by side. So that's you know within the hero block, and it's and it's important to note that you know when these are inline, they're inline relative to their parent. Mm -hmm. Um, and our boxes are not actually IDs, but they're classes since they're all this, they're all the same style. It's it just makes sense to put them in a class rather than giving them all individual IDs and styling each of those. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to set this to display inline block. That'll set all the boxes, and we're also going to set our where is it? Side text display to inline block. And our CSS image to display inline block. And so now, when we, oh, when we refresh this page, you'll see that they're, they're on the same line again. Um, now, there are some issues with the positioning. For instance, uh, this transform and transitions, because it has a two-line title, it's <laughs> up a little bit. And um, this side text is sort of, uh, it's aligned to the bottom rather than the top of, with this image, which is what we want. Um, and that is mostly because of how the CSS box model works. Okay.